Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Sorry it's been a while since I made a video. We've been doing some home improvements such as painting the outside of our house, installing some ceiling fans in our outdoor living area. And so we've been quite busy, but I can tell you right now, during that process, I did take some time to get the JVC DLA NX7 set up and installed in my home theater. And let me tell you guys, it looks incredible. So in this video, I want to kind of talk through a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to talk to you about the firmware update, a really important firmware update if you have this unit that you need to make on it. Um, number two, I'm going to talk about a shelf that I built and how I installed it um, in my uh, theater room. And then thirdly, I'm going to talk about my initial impressions of the NX7. Now, before we jump into the video, several of you mentioned that you would like to see some side-by-side -side comparisons between the JVC NX7 and my previous Epson 5040UB projector. Now, yesterday, I just shipped it out to one of my patrons. Uh, he purchased it, reached out to me and said, hey, I'm interested in buying it. And so um, I I'm not gonna just keep that here and do a whole bunch of testing when somebody's ready to send me cash and, and to purchase it. So I ended up sending that to him uh, just yesterday, but prior to shipping it out, um, I did do some side-by-side -side comparisons. So I'll share that in a future video, but not in this particular video. And speaking of patrons, man, thank you so, so very much to all of my patrons. My patrons allow me the opportunity just to really provide some additional content that I don't share here on this platform. Things like behind the scenes. All of my patrons were getting videos of me during the process of building, um, you know, and getting the JVC installed and set up. Even some issues that I ran into, I share with the patrons. So if you're interested in more content than what I produce here on YouTube, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash youthman to sign up today. All right, guys, before we get into the video, I just want to remind you there's only a few more days left to enter the giveaway for a Valencia Verona theater seat. If you're interested in that, head over to youthmanreviews.com forward slash giveaway. All right, guys, before I installed the NX7, the first thing I wanted to do was update the firmware. Thank you to a bunch of you guys that told me, hey, you definitely need to download the latest firmware, which at the time of this video is 3.10. Now, the biggest reason you'll want to update to 3.10 is a feature that JVC introduced called Frame Adapt HDR. Now, HDR and projectors has always been a, a big challenge for manufacturers to make that look great and, and just perform flawlessly. And so last year, Panasonic teamed up with JVC and Panasonic introduced what they called HDR Optimizer. Now that was great if you had a JVC and if you had the Panasonic player that they had introduced. The problem is a lot of guys that have JVC projectors wanted to keep their, um, you know, maybe they've got an Oppo player and they love that thing and they don't want to have to buy a new player just to get HDR to work really, really well. And so JVC came up with a way that they could do it all internally inside the projector instead of having to use a feature built into a 4K player. So the HDR optimizer basically uses metadata on the disc itself, okay? So like on your 4K disc, there's information encoded on that. And so the player would read that information and then it would use that information to determine the HDR settings. Now the biggest problem with that was oftentimes the metadata on the disc was either incorrect or it was entirely missing. Now that JVC has introduced Frame Adapt HDR, we no longer need that outside source. So basically the projector is looking actually at the scenes themselves. And it kind of is able to see, you know, the average peaks and the average brightness, and it's able to adjust the HDR settings kind of scene by scene and frame by frame, instead of just putting one blanket HDR setting for that entire movie. Installing the latest firmware was very simple. All I had to do was download from the JVC website the firmware file. Then I extracted that, so we basically unzip it. You take that folder and copy it to a brand new formatted uh, thumb drive, like a USB drive. Insert that thumb drive into the JVC, go into the menu settings, 
and tell it you want to update the firmware. And I think it took about 20 minutes. And so really, really flawless, uh, really easy to set up. But you want to make sure that you do that so that you get that frame adapt HDR feature. So once I had the firmware update, it was time to begin to figure out how am I going to mount this? Now, the issue that I was running into was I built my theater room about 13 years ago. And when I built it, initially my um, Panasonic projector was ceiling mounted inside my room. Fast forward a couple years, I upgraded to another Panasonic projector, same ceiling mount. Fast forward a couple more years, upgraded to the Epson 5040, same projector mount. But at that time, because I was upgrading my screen from 103 inch to 150 inch, we had to back that projector up. So instead of being in the ceiling inside my room, we actually cut a hole in the back of my wall and kind of knocked out a wall that separated my daughter's closet to a like a pantry closet um, right next to the theater room. So we were able to use that same ceiling mount outside my room for the Epson 5040UB. So my initial plan was, all right, I'm gonna still use that same projector mount until the JVC arrived. The JVC is almost 50 pounds. It's 46 pounds. And so uh, part of that, the JVC is much, much bigger as well. And so the mount that I had, it was like a universal mount. It was definitely not going to be able to be equipped to handle number one, that much weight, but also um, the, that much width as far as the span for the actual universal mount. And so I began researching, you know, what's the best way to install this? And a lot of you guys were recommending Chief. Chief makes some incredibly durable, um, just really rock solid um, ceiling mounts. And so I began to look online and they sell a kit. And for the JVC NX7, that ceiling mount with a, a 36 inch adjustable pole was going to be like $430. And I thought to myself, man, okay, 430 bucks, you know, I could buy one, that's fine. But is there a better way? Do I need a ceiling mount? You know, the whole purpose of having a ceiling mount in my theater room was to get it out of the way, you know, to have it above people's heads as they're walking by it. Now that the, the projector is outside the room, do I really need a ceiling mount? So I began to ask a lot of guys in some of the home theater uh, Facebook groups that I'm a part of, you know, would there be any issue with me mounting it horizontal, you know, mounting it right side up and using lens shift to shift that image down a little bit to align it to, you know, the top and bottom of my screen. And the overall opinion was absolutely not. Um, it wouldn't affect the image by shifting it down. You just don't want to go to the extreme uh, you know, and be all the way at the very bottom of that lens shift. And you definitely don't want to move, you know, try your best not to have to lens shift it left and right. Uh, but as far as vertical lens shift, wouldn't affect the image quality at all. And so I talked to a friend of mine because I'm not super handy, um, but I had seen online, one of the guys made a suggestion, why not make a shelf that looks something like this? So after looking at the image, I knew that I could build this on my own. Well, at least I thought I could. So I headed up to Lowe's to get all of the components and I ran into a friend of mine, Derek, who's been featured on this channel when I reviewed the two AlunaVision screens as well as the LG Ultra Short Throw Projector. Derek said, man, I've got all the equipment. I even have some extra wood. We'll just go to your house. We'll take some more measurements to make sure we get it exactly right. We'll devise a plan, come back to Lowe's, get the components that we're gonna need, and then we'll head to my house and we'll go ahead and cut the wood and uh, we'll come back to your house and we'll get it assembled, knock it out. So we started off with a piece of birch plywood and basically all we did was cut it to the size that we need. Then we drilled four holes. Okay, we drilled more than four holes uh, because we mismeasured, but we drilled four holes that the uh, threaded rods were going to be secured using nuts and lock washers. And then to support the rods as well as the bottom shelf, we were going to mount a couple of two by fours to the wall into stud using lag bolts. Now what's nice about using nuts and lock washers on both the top part and the bottom part, at any point we can adjust the height and the level 
for each of these four corners, which made it really, really convenient in case in the future, if I get a different projector and I need to raise that up, we can do that very, very easily. So here you can see a final product of the shelf and how that's set up. Uh, very, very simple in design, but because it's inside a closet, it didn't have to be pretty, it didn't have to be fancy, we just needed it functional. I wanted to be able to make sure that I could align the lens to the center of the hole in my wall and be able to mount that shelf very, very securely so that it doesn't vibrate and that it's actually adjustable as well so that we can make sure that we got it perfectly level. So once the projector was installed, how does it look? Guys, I'm telling you, it's incredible, okay? Now, with that said, the Epson 5040UB was a great projector. Uh, I definitely don't wanna knock that. I think the 4K, the, even the faux 4K still looks great. The Epson had a really, really nice uh, vivid image. Colors were, were really good. Um, brightness, definitely, it's a really bright projector. But what I'm seeing with the JVC is different. Um, to me, there's definitely a lot more detail. Um, when watching um, you know, 4K content, you get this rich, vibrant colors that are just astonishing. Now, I don't have this thing calibrated. I don't have it dialed in per se. And, and honestly, guys, I'm not super keen on video calibration, definitely. So I'm gonna need some help with that. So I've got a friend of mine after we get past this whole coronavirus stuff that's gonna come over and help me kind of dial it in and get it calibrated. Um, definitely, I've got a lot to learn about this projector, but a couple of things I wanna mention just right off the bat. Um, number one, I'll do a separate video on how to do this, but I'll just mention this. In the uh, Epson 5040, there were two presets, what they call lens memory. And if you're not familiar with what lens memory is, I made a video specifically on that, what that's used for, how you set that up in the Epson. So if you're interested in that, I'll post a link to it right up here in the card above. But basically in my setup, I have a 150 inch 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio screen. So my screen is really, really wide. It's a lot wider than your standard 16 by 9 screen. And so in my setup, there are times that I watch content that has 16 by 9. Most of the time, I don't. Most of the time, my 4K uh, videos, my Blu-rays, they're usually in that wider aspect, 2.35 to 1, 2.39 to 1, 2.4 to 1, those types of aspects. So they're going to be really, really wide, and they fill my screen. So one thing that was really important to me when I built my home theater 13 years ago and chose to go with a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio screen was the ability to easily switch between 2.35 to 1 and 16 by 9 content. And so without getting into to super detail on that, some projectors, at that time, 13 years ago, there were only two projectors, JVC and Panasonic. Um, now there's some other ones, I think Sony even has it, but they have what they call lens memory, and some of them call it different things. So in the Epson 5040UB, it had two lens memory um, presets, we'll just call them. So basically how that works is you set your, uh, you know, you align the image for 16 by nine and you save that as a preset because you're basically having to use your zoom, you're using maybe lens shift to get it aligned to the top and the bottom, and then you're also needing to focus that. And so you're, you're kind of saving those three things for 16 by nine. And in my case, I would just label it 16 by nine. Then I would put in like a 4K uh, video that was in 2.35 to one. And now what's happening is you've got gray bars on the top, gray bars on the bottom, and you got gray bars on the side. So in essence, what you have to do is zoom in to make that image larger to fill the entire screen. And then again, you may have to use some lens shift to kind of get that image aligned. And then you're gonna to have to focus. And then you save that as a 2.35 to one preset. So the Epson 5040UB had two of those. The JVC has not only like two, I think it's got like eight or nine, and they're not even just lens memory presets. JVC went way further and they actually call it, I think it's called installation modes. And so basically what this allows you to do 
is not only save zoom and focus and lens shift, but I could change any setting for the most part that I want in the JVC and save that as a preset. So let's just say hypothetically, I wanted to create a preset, uh, you know, in my room when I have the, uh, my, you know, a lot of ambient light. And so I may have certain settings on there that are adjusted for that. And I could change that and save that as a installation mode. That's pretty cool. The other benefit to that is I could save one for a bunch of different aspect ratios for 16 by nine. I could do another one for, I don't watch any four by three, but you can do 16 by nine, 2.35 to one, 2.40 to one. And you can dial that in and save it as a preset. And so I really, really like the fact that they gave us multiple options for that. Like I said, I think there's eight, maybe even nine different um, installation modes that you can save that as. So as I mentioned, the, the biggest thing that I'm seeing though is picture quality. Man, this projector looks fantastic. What I would consider out of the box. Other than updating the firmware version, I haven't adjusted any color settings yet. It's just out of the box and it looks spectacular. Colors are vivid, HDR content pops. Um, and then on top of that, something that I've never had the option of experiencing here in my home theater is those deep, deep, rich blacks that JVC has always been known for. And so no longer do I describe them as gray bars. These are now black bars. Um, that's one thing that projectors, they don't have the black levels typically that something like an OLED would have, but JVC comes really, really close. So that's pretty exciting to me as well. So I definitely have a lot to learn with the JVC. We've just got it set up. I've only watched one movie with it and it was a streaming content. So I haven't even checked out a 4K disc or anything like that. Uh, we watched Extraction and that movie was pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, a lot of action in that. Colors look great. Um, there's definitely some darks in that, you know, that movie. And so that was cool to be able to see the dynamic range that the JVC is able to produce when you've got a scene that has some areas of that picture that are really, really dark. And then other parts of that, like maybe the sky that are really bright and that JVC is able to handle both of those fantastically. I'll be making more videos on the JVC NX7, so be sure you're subscribed to the channel. And don't forget to sign up for the giveaway for the Valencia Verona Theater Seat over at youthmanreviews.com forward slash giveaway. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.